All right. We're live. What's yeah. going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Odium and Andrea show. This is a podcast where myself, my beautiful wife, Andrea, we sit down, we get together, and we talk about a person uh, who's written a book or somebody that's written a book about a person <laughs> uh, and they've done something really cool adventurous or inspiring and we take a look at it and just talk about it and see if there's anything that that's in there that we want to incorporate into our lives yeah. as uh, we strive to be the you know as the best people that we can be um, and we hope that you'd love to come along on the journey as well and um, you know self-improvement is always uh, always a good thing Absolutely, uh, we can always be better um, and today we're going to be reading in, this is a big book. <laughs> Endure. How to work hard, outlast, and keep hammering. Cameron Haynes. This guy looks like uh, forward by Joe Rogan. <laughs> this guy, let me post that up here. This guy looks like he's, he's not messing around. It's on the back. David Goggins, Joe Rogan. Okay, so I'm obviously going to like this book, I would imagine. Yes. Um, this looks like he's out in the cold or snow or whatever. He's got like snow on his beard or something. I don't know. We'll see what, what's going on. Um, yeah. Yeah you like the stuff that we do check us out on our website odumanandrea.com and anything else you want to say before we start i don't think so let's just dive into it endure it. cameron haynes do you know anything about him nothing at all never heard of him before no okay let's see what does it say on the back i have trained with many of the toughest and hardest men on the planet and only one stands out that one is cameron haynes this is a quote by david goggins so, <laughs> so that probably says something right there yeah Little bit. And Joe Rogan says, Cameron Haynes is a master at one of the at one of the art forms that gets the least amount of attention. The art of maximized life. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. I found out about him because he was on Rogan. Right. And he Like is, recently or it was an older He's been on Rogan multiple, multiple times. Multiple times. Okay. And he's a hunter. And so mm. that's where him and Rogan kind of like hooked up because, right. and it's not, he's not just like with a gun, he's which like a bow hunter. He's a bow hunter, yeah. which is like a hundred percent harder. Right. Uh, so that's kind of where I heard from him. And Does then, anyone like screw the bow? I'm like, you know, <laughs> with a knife. <laughs> yeah. Not a knife, or but like, like a spear, a spear? right? Yeah, I don't like know. Like you think of all like, uh, the people here in like North America were like hunting like wool, woolly mammoths or whatever. Right. Jeez, like in the snow and like, like spears. Spear. It's like, and that's like an elephant, right? That's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, so th what's really interesting about him is for the longest time, like he just had just kind of like a job in Oregon. Um, this guy. Yeah, yeah. Just just working at like the um, the <laughs> the municipal utility. Right. Like right. Water and pow power. Yeah, office. Just working, just working there. The city. Just working there. Put and some, so put some dollars in my pocket. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So <laughs> he just he worked there for the longest time, even though he was like he he is the longest sponsored Under Armour athlete. Uh, in like history yeah interesting yep. okay yeah so he's been like he's pretty big he's been around for a while okay well can i how yeah. old is he 50 how old is he that's a good question 50 i think he's 55 okay his birthday is the same as mine oh yeah yep so that's kind of cool cool so he grew up and so one of his um one of his like main kind of catchphrases that's on all of his merch is keep hammering Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so he says, or, or it's, it's hammer time. Hammer wait, time. wait, that's no, no, no. So who, it's someone, time. someone else has, has done that. No. So he yeah. says, in order to live a life marked by passion, tenacity, focus, and resilience, you have to simply keep hammering. Keep hammering isn't some clever motto. It's a wake up call to meaning. It's a reference that reminds us to pound away at the lie of impossible. Mm. So yeah, yep. super, super good. When the, what is it? When the impossible becomes possible, the possible. <laughs> <laughs> He grew up in Eugene, Oregon. His parents divorced when he was pretty young and his dad, when the reason was because his dad was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. So his dad was like a big coach in Eugene, Oregon. So Eugene's pretty famous for runners. Um, Steve Prefontaine. If you're a runner, you know who Steve Prefontaine is. He's like super huge. He was killed when he was very young, but he trained mm. and I think he was from Eugene, Oregon. Okay. Uh, I think Nike has like a like a training place there as well. So it's, it's, it's a pretty big deal. His dad was a pretty big deal as a coach. He got a scholarship um, as an athlete to one of the universities. So he, his dad was like a pretty big deal in the community. Okay. And so, but he was an alcoholic. He got in a car crash yeah. and that's kind of why his parents divorced. His mom remarried to his stepdad who also was an alcoholic. Hmm. I feel like she needs <laughs> to make better life I decisions. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And he just said, like, he hated his stepdad, and he was always trying to split his time between, like, 
both of his parents' houses and trying to make everybody happy. At what age? Like young, like 12, 13, like. But he didn't have, he didn't really have much of a choice though. Don't the the courts? No, I don't don't know. Mm. Back then he was kind of going back and forth. Um, And he also had like a younger brother and he missed his brother because his brother would always be with his mom. So it was like, it was hard. And like he just, he had in school, he had a rough time in school. He just sounds, again, it's like kind of like the typical thing where he just wants to be out and like doing stuff right yeah like all of these right. a lot of these people that we've talked about like, like they don't want to sit still in school sit still like in what school. are you They're teaching me like is this even exactly yeah yeah exactly I'm not interested in it whatever yeah and he like hates his stepdad his stepdad hates him kind of it kind of sounds like that so it's like a bad situation yeah and so he says it's just weird total aside but yeah. like if you're in a you know if you have kids and you, you know you're divorced and you want to like remarry or whatever you know that's fine but like you would think that you'd want to at least put yourself in a position where if you're uh-huh. going to find another partner that they at least can be amicable towards your children, right? Like, you know, but anyways, I don't want to get into the whole yeah. dating dynamics or whatever. No, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Just, it's, it's, just, it's always strange when I you know. hear that. It's like, oh, well, you're remarried, but yet the other, the new person coming in like is detested by the kids and they just butt heads all along. It's like, just, do you want to deal with that? Like, it's, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I know you too. can't help what you fall in love with, but. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. So, and he says, and I loved this quote, he says, it's easy to use your childhood as a crutch instead of seeing it as a chisel. Mm. And I was just like, I love that because I think so many people yeah. are just like, oh, well, I had a bad upbringing and I had this and that, all these excuses. Mm-hmm. And David Goggins is the perfect example yeah, of this. Yeah, should have been a statistic, right? right? 100%. Yep. And then, but it's like, instead of like, then use that as fuel, mm-hmm. just like Goggins did, just as he <clears> is. Like, it's so awesome. It's not even it's even reframing your mind too because like I've never talked about it too but you know I didn't have a typical childhood growing up as well too and I had some rough aspects of of my childhood and you could look at it I look at it as you know yeah this a lot of the stuff that happened to me was really bad but it it in a way it kind of shaped who I am today because I mean you're a product of all the things that kind of happened to you and all the decisions you make right exactly so it pushed me into directions of like if you want to get out of a bad situation or whatever no one's going to come and help you you have to be responsible to get yourself out of that situation so yeah it's just different ways to 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 frame things in in your in your mind yeah absolutely he played sports like all through high school he got pretty good into football Mm -hmm. and he eventually he didn't get like a scholarship but he played football at like this um southern oregon state university okay um but he just he wasn't good enough to kind of be like a varsity like a varsity player like he would well, that is varsity at the university isn't it maybe it is uh, yeah, but maybe, maybe he just wasn't like wrong. a maybe he just wasn't like a top line guy yeah, or, no, he or wasn't. whatever he, or you know wasn't. maybe he's just yeah on the on the bench or being like a sub or whatever like he's on the team but yeah yeah so so then he eventually because he didn't have like a scholarship or anything right kind of dropped out and then went down to like community college Mm. there yeah and so i don't know if he ended up graduating or not i'm not sure but then he ends up getting just kind of like a warehouse job and it pays like four bucks or something an hour like yeah just ridiculous well well, this would be like in the 80s yeah yeah something like that so i mean he doesn't like have any direction in his life at this point athletics was kind of gone out of his life so that wasn't there and then he started he hadn't drank his entire like high school growing up had never touched a drop of alcohol or through college and then all of a sudden in college that's when it started yeah Yeah, and it was like drinking all the time he flipped and crashed multiple cars like all of this it's a funny thing about college and going to school where a lot of people pick up those bad habits because yeah he said the only thing that like really made him stop was um having his his son when his son was born and even then Mm. because he's like i don't want to be like this deadbeat dad and i don't want to be like the dad from his own experience yeah exactly and so it took him a while to stop like he knew he wanted to stop, but it took him a while to stop after his son was born. Like it wasn't immediate, but it was like eventually. Okay. He, so you skipped a little stop. bit, and, 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 yeah. which is fine. But yeah. how long was he from college till he had his first kid? I, thought, I think like 23, 24, no, maybe like 24. He was 23 or 24 when he had his kid. So yeah, like, yeah. So you'd say he was like an alcoholic almost at that well, time. Well, I don't know about alcoholic, but mm-hmm. I think just like, just like drinking a lot and being right. stupid, right? Like Sure. Like a, like, a, like a teenager. Stupid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... He has this buddy who he... Okay, let me back up one, one moment. His stepdad, though, 
Mm-hmm. It takes him and his brother to one of these like hunting camps. Okay. And he was like, it was kind of a weird thing for a stepdad to take him because it's just like a camp, like a, like a boy's weekend or whatever to go hunting. And so he was like, it was a pretty big deal for him to take us because I'm sure the other guys didn't really want us around, mm. but he took them hunting and that's when he killed his first deer. And so and that was like his first time hunting his too. His first time hunting. And it was really, really big. He felt like he had accomplished a lot and that confidence and, right. and all of that thing. And so, yeah, so he was 15 and he was just like super, super proud. So he'd been hunting kind of like all throughout high school and, and into, okay. um, college and stuff. Yeah. And so he, but he was always, always with a gun and he would always, he had this one buddy. They weren't like super, super friends in, in high school, but this Roy was the guy you talked to if you wanted to know like, well, where's the good hunting? Where do I need to go mm. the season open? Right. So all, he just knew all this stuff. He was he just had, a hunter. Yeah. And he, he had, had all the knowledge. he had like, he had, um, I guess trap lines that he would put out every year. So he was always busy doing that. Yeah. So that's what he would, he would talk to. So this Roy says to him, when he's about 19, he says, I think he would really like bow hunting. Like, I think you just give it a shot. Like, let's just give it right, a shot. Right. So he goes out, he buys like a $200 bow. Like it's really yeah. cheap, like whatever. Get started. He misses his first, he aims at a buck, misses it. And he's, then he becomes obsessed with, with, with trying to, to get yeah. a buck with the bow. He spent, he just, he hunts for like 18 days straight until he kills his first right. buck with the with the bow and then he, and then from then on he's just like obsessed with it yeah, yeah. becomes and he's like i think for him he's like i realize like i found my passion in life and mm. this is this is, is bow hunting this is yeah. what i want right yeah and so him and roy would go out together and then they formed this like really huge friendship with each other yeah. and they would always push each other in terms of where they were gonna go hunting and, all, and that kind of thing because that's a big part of it too right it's also it's not only just about getting the deer but it's also like where you go hunting because that's also because you got to pack a- it out and it adds more difficulty levels or whatever yeah. because you're out there and you're like camping out too as well too yep. and wherever wilderness you are and not only that but like they're in oregon and it's all mountains where they're going mm-hmm. and so what they wanted to do was they don't want to hunt where everyone else hunts right yeah. and a lot of it is like they're guided hunts and so these people are like you know the city slicker type people that sure. should probably shouldn't really be out there well if they want to learn they be out there, yeah. But, you know yeah so they would keep pushing each other and going further and further and further out. like into the mountains or whatever yeah exactly yeah. and so he realized like that's where you need to go. And with something with bit like this with hunting, it didn't matter how much money you had. Like it's all about, it's almost like an, like an honest sport because it's all about how much time you're putting into practicing hunting right. with that bow. And yeah. so it's, how good of a shot you are. Yeah. So when he says like, it didn't matter how much money you had or what success or your reputation, like how tough you are and how good of shape you are, you're in gives you currency on the mountain. Yeah. We came to realize the tougher we were, the more success we had. Yeah, for they sure. would just continually push each other. But then Roy moves to Alaska mm. because uh, he's obsessed with hunting and that's well, the a good place, place to go. That's the place to go. So he can't find anyone to go on these crazy hunts with him. He has no other, no one can keep up with right. him like Roy can. It, and is Roy, um, like, uh, was he married too? Yeah, married with kids. Yeah, yeah. okay. So took yeah. the whole family out to Alaska. Yeah, exactly. And so he starts going by himself. Like, Cam starts going by himself. Mm, yeah. And just pushing, pushing, pushing. And he talks a lot of, in the book about sacrifice. Like, what are you willing to sacrifice to, like, really pursue your passion? Mm-hmm. And so he would go to work and he would shoot as much as he can when he got home. Like, just shoot, shoot, shoot. Like, in the backyard or yeah, whatever. Just, just practice. to practice. Yeah. Practice, like, constantly practicing. Then he would leave work on like fr- like go right from work from Friday, drive all the way to the mountains, hike in as far as he could, hunt, 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 get back home For like right in time to go to work. Does he have a family though at this point? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So and this is he is, spending any time with his family? Or? So this is what I really wonder because mm-hmm. I, they have three kids. Yeah. And I'm like, what does your wife think about all this? Because that's a lot to leave. Three kids is a lot to leave your wife with. And I feel and I I kept. I think that's the one thing that kind of I wondered a lot about. It's like, I feel like it's really selfish in a way. And like, I don't know what the dynamic is. In yeah. Like, we I, definitely I need a lot more context yes. for how the, the, the situation at home works. Um, uh, like a hundred, a hundred percent. But I guess like, and like, so like for me, it's like, 
like he he did kind of talk about this like a little bit and so did Jocko on Jocko's podcast and they talked about like you know they are he, like Jocko would come home from a long day at work and then drop his bag and then pick up his jujitsu bag and go and play ju- do jujitsu for like two hours and yeah. his wife is kind of like what the fuck and and he's like but I'm a better person once right. I've done it and I'm the same way with running when I, yeah. if I can get my run in and I or my workout whatever I can be a better person for everybody else Damn. but I feel no, like there's I totally a happy get it. medium. Well, right? there, I mean, there, but I mean, look at our situation too, right? Like I'm working so much on the things that I'm doing, working on right now, building business, all that kind of stuff. So you're putting in the 16, 18 hour days doing work. So, but I'm here at, at the home, but sometimes I'm still here, but yeah. maybe I'm not as present obviously as I am, but I'm not, a hunt, I'm not out hunting, but I'm still doing whatever, you know, what my passion is. Right. So there's a dynamic to that. And I think, you know, and if, if, if you're in a household that is okay with, you know, the quote unquote traditional roles or whatever, where the woman's taking care of the kids in the house and all yeah. that kind of stuff, and the man's taking care of the money and blah, 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 and, and providing and all that kind of stuff, then okay, then that's fine. If they work that out, then that's great. But it's it's tough to say because the way you just said it now is like literally spends every single second not being with the kids. So I, I doubt it's that extreme. No, and he did say like, you he know did what say I mean? like he would be like, he would go to like a basketball game or something, but then like immediately like leave and then do whatever he needed to do so right. definitely he's he's not like yeah. an absentee dad but it's i just i just wonder what the dynamic is like that right. was like kind of my main question mm. reading this book was like how does that balance work with your family are they still married now yeah. so yeah. i'm sure i'm yeah. sure it's working out just fine right yeah of course so yeah, yeah. so that but was that's good too because it's it's uh, yeah i mean yeah i don't know i don't have any problem with it i'll just say that uh with him going hunting but again i would like to know a little bit more information. That's like exactly how often he's going. Like I would just wouldn't do that because I think that'd be too that'd be too much. That's a lot, yeah. Um, because I also actually want to be there for the kids and help raise yeah. or whatever. But even then, still like yeah, a couple hours a day is good. <laughs> I I don't know. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, it's interesting. In the book, he has like he's writing, writing, but then he has these little kind of sections like this, and it's just talking about like one. Well, I, no, I was just gonna put. It, I was gonna put it to the camera. Um, where it talks, it's kind of like a motivational type mm. thing that he he's writing, and so like this one, it says, "Find your edge," and he says, "I go where others won't or can't go because it's too far and too difficult." This is what I've relied on for over the years. Um, so that's what he's talking about kind of talking about yep. about these more motivational things and like his philosophies and ideas mm-hmm. about about stuff so there, that was really really cool and so the one thing he says um is that he always worked really really hard and it's like that hard work like outperforms talent every time yep. and he, he always worked hard because he never thought he was good enough yep. and so he says everybody has an excuse everybody has a reason you can always come up with a reason to not go after a challenge so i've learned to never care what the excuse is it's never valid that's my attitude and that's my edge it's how i've built endurance and restored resilience and fostered resiliency there's no rest days in my schedule and that is the reason i excel yeah and so this is just an aside too about rest days because both him and Jocko don't take rest days and people are just like, well, you're going to take rest days and blah, blah, blah. But they're what you do fair. But what they said, which I thought was so totally true is life is going to give you rest days. Mm. Like you're going to be, you're going to get injured or you're going to get sick or you're going to be, I don't know, commuting or something. And there's something that's going to keep you from doing it, even though, you know, you had planned to, but just life happens. So I thought that was a really interesting kind of way. way And it it really depends too on what it is that you're doing as well too. Right. Like, if you're going to the gym lifting weights one day and the next day you're rolling around doing jujitsu and then the next day you're going for a, a hike and you know you're doing different things and different yeah. muscles so like is there ever a, such a thing as a rest day anyways because you're always moving your body and you should always move your body like i mean you know what i mean so you're going to get different types of rest as well too depending on the activity you're doing or then the one yeah. day you're, you're, you're going surfing right that's you know like yeah there's lots of different things and i think if you keep doing different things and those guys too will probably be the first to say it's like yeah well you don't go hammering out your max bench press every single day and just wait till you get injured because that's just stupid right and they don't do that either so they're smart about that but i love that philosophy of like yeah just keep working every day you know again it doesn't have to be this whole max effort what you're doing every single day but yeah you know exactly it's like keep at your craft every day 100 percent. you know and that's the only thing that's like that's fueling him through this is and he has 
what's unreal about him is apparently like the average success rate on a, when you're hunting crossbow is like 10% mm, to like he, get something. He has and that's a, like 10% per day or 10% for like when you go out hunting. Oh, I don't know. Mm. But the point is, is like he has a 100% success rate oh every time he goes every out, time he, he, he catches goes. something eh? yeah and that just shows again it's that hard work that perseverance and just putting in the work every single day well, it's probably I, one thing i always wondered about hunting is how hard it is to actually go out there and like find the animals like does he track the animals does he yeah. learn how to do that oh yeah so he talked a lot about that actually on Draco. and Draco was talking about when he first went out on a hunt there's a really famous crossbow guy his name is dudley and i forget his last name now it doesn't matter, mm-hmm. but um, if you listen to Rogan talk about podcasts and, or Jocko, you're going to hear about this Dudley guy right. because he's huge in the crossbow. And so Jocko went out with him. And Is it crossbow so, or like bow and arrow? No, it's like a cross. It's a, well, no, sorry. It's bo- it's a bow and arrow. Right. Bow and arrow. Yeah. Right. So, so the, bow hunting, I guess. Bow hunting. The, yeah. That's a better way right. to say it. You're right. So he goes, so Jocko goes out with his Dudley guy and he's like, I can't even believe it because you hit it and then you have to go find it. Like the deer. The deer, whatever it is you're hunting. And he's like, you know, the tracking, he's like, he can see like the smallest little like thing, like twig or something. And he knows that this is the way the deer went or whatever it was. So he's like, I didn't realize like what a big deal tracking is as part of it. And then it's the same thing with trying to find them, right? You have to figure it out. You have to know where to look and then you have to be there's like like there's so much science and physics to it too because oh, like yeah. you have to be in a certain area so they don't smell you well, or exactly they don't see like all of these there's so much to well, it they're so attuned at predator you know avoiding oh, predator yeah, <laughs> yeah predators, and that's right? what he talks about mm. like and that's yeah do they do any hunting other than deer like do they hunt oh, yeah. bears or so it's mostly I mean? like bull elks that they're hunting at, at, elks. like edi- edible Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like edible elks. You said elks or elk, deer, deer, whatever it is. Whatever those. What what like family is that? Is there like something called you know like, a, like uh, a deer type? You yeah, know what, forget, you know what I mean? Yeah, if no there's I mean. I like what it's called. Yeah, yeah I forget what it's called. But no, anything bear. They hunt bear. The big. Um, uh, do they eat the bear? Yep. I wonder what that tastes uh, like. Doll sheep. The big like the big horned doll sheep. They go hunting for those mm. as well. So like basically anything you can kill right. with the bow. They're going to hunt for it. And what, and so I, I have quite, I have so many questions yeah. too, because I want to learn how to hunt. I know. I want to do that. Yeah. Um, because I just want to be, to take control of my own food yeah. supply, basically, oh, right? Um, and, and I just have questions and like, so they, they kill it and skin it right there and yep. do all that stuff and yep. they package the meat and. And they pack it out. You know, and so if they're going on like a two week hunting trip or something crazy like that, do they have multiple kills? Oh, or is it I like think, yeah. you go until you get one and then that's no, it? No, because I think it, every, everybody wants to kill something so they can bring it home to eat. But then how do you keep that from rotting after if you're, you, do you know what I mean? Like all these logistical questions I, know. I have, well, like I, well, how I does mean, that work? I know, me too. You so. know, or like, are you, do you smoke it somehow? So then when you're smoking it, then it, you know, dries and cures, but then. They have it shipped to them. Wherever they are, they have it shipped to them. Like if they're in Alaska hunting bear, they'll get the bear and then they'll have it shipped to them. Like the meat. Yes. Right. So I don't know how After that all works, but. Process it or have, whatever, yeah. packaging, well, what have you. Yeah, exactly. He goes through a bit like how they do it, like yeah. how they break everything down in there. So just think like if you kill like one deer, like that's got to be a shit ton of meat, right? You kill a bull. Have you, s- remember we saw those elk and those were, I don't think those were like, oh, that, those that was were wild, like, Well, that right? was at the zoo. Yeah. Oh, they're huge. They're humongous, yeah. these things. Like, there's a lot of meat. It's a lot of meat. Like, I, I just think like how much money you'd save <laughs> instead oh, no, of going it's to, true. to go to the, it's the true. meat store. Yeah. And then just like, he talks a lot about like the ethos of the hunter as well. And like thanking, like thanking the, the animal. The for avatar its or thank you for your yeah. sustenance. And, and all. so, yeah. It's like, it's so much more ethical than vegan, <laughs> like the, the dogmatic vegans make it out to be. And he, he talks a lot right, about that too. Right. And he's just like, well, even in um, Michael Easter's book that we went through, um, The Comfort Crisis, mm-hmm. he talks a lot about like the fallacy of, uh, of, of nature and people thinking like, everything in nature is so idyllic and nice and oh and when, and when an elk dies it's like no their death by a hunter is so much calmer and nicer than a if death by, they're being eaten alive by wolves oh. like it's insane yeah. well like how nature, they're killed i mean is, for me like I'm, I'm an ecologist right that's what i got my degree exactly. in and you learn about nature and there's so many things out there like you say every once in a while you hear the symbiotic relationship like oh well this mm. 
you know the amoeba and then the the, the clownfish the they have the, yeah, yeah they have a nice relationship yeah. this one exactly kinda, yeah that's all great oh but geez the parasites you get into the parasites crazy. the ones that infect uh like a snail's brain and makes them go out and, oh, pul- so and they get good. eaten and then that parasite eats the bird from the inside oh, whatever so disgusting or like the, the mother gets killed by the babies because they eat her or, they, uh, <laughs> like, or or the, the the wasp that that uh they'll find a spider and and inject the, their babies like into a spider and yeah, then yeah yeah that spider will be like over like months will be like eaten alive by the parasite or the yeah. wasp when yeah. when it hatches like there's, there's, so, there's many so many of these parasites and like think of humans like all the things that are out to get us viruses bacteria oh. all. like it is it's a war zone out there it's it's little even if you think like a plant like you go into a field and like oh it's just nature and this plant like even the plants it's like a battlefield you know of like oh, who's yeah. the seeds go down who's going to get the the most light and the nutrients Jeez, or whatever just and they're going to fight planet earth and you'll oh, see like it yeah. is brutal out there i mean it's beautiful but yeah life is and yeah think of like anything that gets hunted uh by like a wolf or a bear or whatever like you're getting you're getting eaten alive yeah yeah it's rough oh, it's man. really so really rough it's uh yeah but to just like you know just One shot shoot, and that's shoot, it. shoot me now kind of thing it's almost like an it's almost it's almost yeah. always like an instant kill and that's what they strive for and that's well, why you sure. work so hard is you want that instant kill right. you, you don't, don't want, want to shoot it to in, like, shoot in the leg like, oh. exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly no for sure yeah when he was 15 and he killed his first buck he wrote an essay about that kill and his english teacher was like this is this is amazing work like you did mm-hmm. such a great job with it so it really kind of um lit a fire in him and he just really enjoyed writing and so he would read in his different bow hunting magazine or hunting magazines all the articles about people talking about their hunts and what happened and all these things and so that's what he was striving towards was to write articles about his hunts and submit them to his favorite magazines oh that's cool to um to publish and so eventually it took him a long time but eventually he did get published and i think i think he said he was even like on the board for one of his favorite magazines eventually. Oh, really? Yeah. So did he like he's submitting all these articles? Is yeah. he getting feedback from the oh, publishers? Yes. Oh, yes, that's yes, really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's good. That was good. And no, so then, it's all these cool things that you wouldn't think of doing of just no. you know just pursue the things that you like. It's like oh I love this magazine. I'm just gonna start exactly. writing for them or just submitting, or just submitting things. Submitting things. Yeah. Exactly. And then. Yeah. And so yeah. then eventually he goes on and he writes two books about bow hunting. Yeah. Um, and then obviously this one. Can I, if I wanted to learn about bow hunting, mm-hmm. like there's got to be, are there any places that. There's an archery I'm, place here. I know there's an archery place that you can just learn how to shoot or whatever. Or you can just go practice. But I mean, are there like actual like outfitters that teach you, you know, like there's people that teach survival skills or whatever. They'll take you out. Is there any place that teaches you hunting? So I think it would be like, you would like, like hire maybe like a guide and go on like a guided hunt and then maybe learn that way. That would be, that would be the first place I'd start looking. I don't know if there's something a bit more like structured. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I wonder like, you know, how do you learn this stuff? Just go out there. Like I'll go out there and I'll, I'll go there for three weeks. I'm sure I won't catch anything. Right. Cause I don't know anything about it. Right. But Yeah. 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 Um, this one, this one little thing, he talks about thanking his critics. <laughs> mm, thank and, thank yeah. the haters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for your unsolicited advice on how I train. I appreciate your comments on my rest and recovery. It's nice to know your suggestions about how much I should sleep, <laughs> like all these things. And it's, yeah. but he's just like, unless you've done this, this, and all of these things, like shut the fuck up, basically. Yeah. Like you have no reason yeah, to Yeah, it's talk. funny. Well, it's, it's, I don't know if you remember with Goggins book when he was talking about like he tried to break the world record for most pull-ups and yes. of course you got haters but yeah. then he's like you know what sometimes you got to listen it's like oh actually these people that were hating on me they're like they're, 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 some of them were kind of right yeah. in terms of telling me what my technique and how it was off yeah. so I totally get yeah. acknowledging the haters and, and saying like okay well whatever but sometimes it's good to maybe if you're trying to do something and they try to offer some criticism you sure. might be able to take but out some, mostly some it is oh mostly it's just haters and like right? he just uses it for fuel and that's what he oh says, yeah absolutely so. especially if it's something so stupid like that i was like yeah. oh i think you're not sleeping whatever it's like well you don't, yeah. Know, yeah. Me. You don't know me you don't know me like my body and how i feel <laughs> or whatever and, exactly and, so. and you're, you're using your own personal experiences and whatever to try to you know, shit on what I'm doing or whatever. Yeah. We're not, we're two different people. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Exactly. So he starts running in 2000 and in 2003, he started, he ran his first marathon. So, but he just started running to test himself. And what he found was like, it super improved his of like hunting ability, right? Oh, so his endurance. Endurance. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Right. And so he's just figuring out that now. So, so in 2003, he ran his first marathon, finished third. Like that's Mm. pretty awesome. And yeah, it just, it was such a huge impact. So he just like kept running and running. Finished third. This was 
like one of those crazy marathons. Like no, this was just, this was just pros. You know what I mean? This was like, just like a marathon marathon. But then all of it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. I, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> so then he, um, what does he do? So then he gets into ultra marathons because why not? No, I not this uh, oh, forty two miles is not uh, good enough. Might as well do the hundred miles. Yeah, and so Rogan always jokes when he talks about because he talks about campaigns quite a bit because the guy's a savage and he's just like yeah this guy runs a marathon every day which basically he does because that's what this he does guy. yeah that's what he does for training and when he's st- when he's when it's that's well, a lot because that's like five hours yeah or I don't know if he's like the, don't the pros do it in like two and a half hours yeah he's probably probably do I'd say three to three, four three to four yeah. yeah. So, but it's just like that's what he's passionate about. He knows it helps him, so he get he makes the sacrifices. Like he says, he gets up early. He goes out yeah. when he can. He'll go for like I don't know if it he does it all in once or breaks it up during like the day during just the to day. get all the mileage yeah. in. Um, yeah. So and he says. Um, he loves running the same reason he loves hunting. And it says in both endeavors, justice is always served as the people who work the hardest and sacrifice the most. Mm. And that's what I was kind of saying. Like hunting is an honest sport. Like you got to practice and be good. Like, and then the results will follow. It'll, it shows. He tells this really interesting story in 2008. He's running the Boston marathon, which again, if you're a runner, Boston marathon is like the one you want to go to. That's the one you want to go to. You have to. You have to have, be able to run a marathon in a specific yeah, amount gotta, of time. Yeah, you got to qualify. You got to qualify for it. So he ends up um, running with Lance Armstrong. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And so. Like just beside him? Like he just sees him there and it's like, oh. He knew he was going to be there and he's always been like a huge fan of Lance Armstrong and he knew he would he was going to be running in this marathon. And so he was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool. Like if I could run up beside him, like he's obviously not going to know what I am, who I am. And this, he's like, it's probably not going to happen, but it totally does. He's running alongside him. And I guess Lance lost his pacer because sometimes people will run with like pacers. They'll yeah, yeah. keep their pace. He and lost him because he couldn't keep up. I know. I don't know. I don't know. I just was just maybe so busy. He lost him in the crowd or something. I don't know what happened. Doesn't matter. And yeah. so he, he looks over at Cam and he was just like, oh, well, I lost my pacer. Like what pace are you running? And so same pace that he was running. And so they ended up running together the whole time. And then, yeah. pull, then he, and then Cam pulls ahead and beats him. Yeah. And so because Eugene, Oregon is such like a huge running area, they even announced it over the intercom at his kid's school. that He beat Lance Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of a big deal. Um, and then he goes on and he, well, hang on. This yeah, was, yeah. this was before, Lance Ar- Armstrong sure. got called out for all of his doping I'm or whatever. Not, well, it was 2008, you know, so I'm not sure. I don't know when Lance Armstrong's whole stuff came out. The whole cycling. Yeah. It's like everyone in cycling was doping. Like, it's insane. Oh, yeah. Um, But, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, so I thought that was and just like... And, like, before his cancer as well, too? No, I think... No, I think he had had can- can- cancer by that point. So... Yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to find a page. Here. Anyways, even though he's doping, he's still obviously a, he's a, a still, good athlete. Yeah, but exactly. It's exactly. just it's, it's such a shame though that you know people look up to athletes yeah. like that, and you just find out that they're all, they're all on drugs. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So his first ultra marathon, uh, sorry, his first ultra distance is 100 miles, and he does that in 2009, and he just he just keeps like keeps going with the running, doing all of these different. Um, crazy crazy big runs yeah. and he talks he talk, like he talks about like the struggle through it yeah and so he gets to know obviously david goggins through the running and a bunch of other really like cool people too like if you're into the yeah. ultra running oh, scene yeah. you're gonna know one <laughs> all those crazy people <laughs> yeah one one person um that he he talks about and he has a picture of her in the book is courtney de walter and she's amazing i really want her to write a book because i would love to pick her brain about mm. how she does what she does yeah she has been on Rogan twice now. She is a freaking savage. She looks so unassuming and like. Oh, the one you're talking about, like the little one or whatever, but she like smashes all the records for. She endurance. did the Moab 240, which is in Utah. It's crazy. It's like through the desert or whatever. Race. Yeah. yeah, and not only desert, but you're going up hot. There's like elevation, like yeah. all of it. It's nuts, and she beat everybody yeah even the guys like yeah. not even just by a little bit but like a lot nine yeah. hours like mm-hmm. it was unreal so he talks about knowing her and basically like surrounding yourself with these people that are striving for the same thing or, and are trying to excel in their field because yeah. i don't know if we talked about this but it's like you're the average of the five people that you hang out with mm-hmm. so you have to be very careful who you pick to hang out with right so 
he gets a lot of hate for doing this running and saying it has helped him hunting because really? yeah from hunters? hunters yeah really yeah so he gets a lot of hate they're like oh you don't need to run ultras to hunt and he's like well, i'm not saying you do <laughs> but he's his, just but, like it helps him well and his whole like his um one of his sayings is train hard hunt easy mm. and it's true right Makes sense. like especially like even for me like when i was training for the marathon it's just like the marathon is kind of or the half marathon that's like your treat right like that's your after all that months of hard training and mm-hmm. that's kind of your treat like go out and have fun yeah. this is what you've been training for yeah. this whole time it should be relatively easy easy yeah. right if you put in the work i could just see like i mean i could imagine if you're super high athlete with like, endurance so when you're hunting you're not going to get as tired and i imagine you're going to have much more control over your breath and your heart rate and so if you're kind of going through along trying to track an animal and you finally get it to be steady enough to not be like so out of breath you can calm your body and your mind really quick to get off that perfect shot i can imagine that being so so, so helpful yeah and like why would you shit on someone for just saying that yeah it's funny too because you always hear people they someone will make a statement and other people will take that statement and say, like, oh, well, so you're saying this? It's like, yeah, no, that's not that's what, what I'm, I'm saying, saying at all. So it's, it's really interesting how people can take apart what someone says and then twist it in a way that makes it seem as if they said something that is completely, completely false. Yeah. So you, you notice a lot of that if you talk, if you listen to how people talk and how they respond to, to other people. You, you, if you really start to pay attention to that, you can really kind of understand uh, the psychology with how people um oh yeah interact with other people it's it's, it's quite crazy and yeah. yeah he has this one piece in here and it's called must be nice and and i like i felt this one so hard because we've had this i've had this said to me many times oh must be nice that you're a stay-at-home mom no, like, right. oh, you're so lucky and he's like the same thing people are like oh it must be nice that you get to go and do these crazy hunts and you get to travel and you get to you know do all these things and it's like are you fucking kidding me like i like worked hard no. for this it's not must be nice like I worked, there's nothing, he says like, there was nothing nice about waking up before the rest of the world opens its eyes. There's nothing nice about working on the weekends or missing family time or sacrificing life for a singular passion. But that's the choice I made. And so that has, I remember hearing so many times when the kids were little, oh, must be nice that you're able to stay home with your kids. And it's like, you have no idea what we have sacrificed Uh, for that to be a reality. And I freaking, like it's, it spoke to me so hard. It's a, what is it that that it is where people will just I don't even know how to say this, but they'll look at other people's lives and be like, "Oh, you're doing all these things that I wish I could be doing." And then in order to like, in order to have the, they don't have the mindset of like, "Well, maybe I need to change who I am or what I'm doing so that I could achieve that." Yeah. But instead of doing that, it's like more more of like you got to put that person down as if there's yeah. something wrong, wrong with, with them that. so that you feel. Yeah. better about yourself and right? that's what he talks and he's like if i see someone that's successful i want to study them what did they do or to number, get where first they of all are? congratulate them yeah, exactly. and not shit on them like oh well must be nice that you're able to like michael phelps oh must be nice that you're able to to win all those races so easily yeah dude works out for 20 hours yeah. a day for like or, 18 oh, years must be nice you, know you, can, you can eat like a whole pizza and this that, and the other thing without gaining weight have you seen this so guy train he has yeah. to eat that much to fuel his body yeah. like it's not must yeah. be nice so yeah it's I just know. i just i loved it so so yeah. much then he so then he has this other thing in here too it says there's no substitute for daily dedication to your craft whatever it may be my definition of that is punching the time clock every day giving mm-hmm. everything i have seven days a week and refusing to ever be satisfied yep. and like that's how you become successful and if you if you have the singular passion like whatever it is like work 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 yeah like this is why it, it really bothers me when people like I mean, it really bothers me. I don't know who said he sleep for this, but when people get down at people that are really successful, and they just shit on them because I, I don't know, they're obviously they're jealous because they're not as successful. Like I'll give you like a maybe over the top example of like Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. So many people are like, oh, this oh, he's too rich, he just makes too much money, and it's like. Look at what this guy does. Oh, you want to talk about the hustle of back in the day when he's starting up these companies for nothing. Like he's like, yep. I'm going to figure out how to how to build rockets or I'm going to figure out how we can make uh, better cars. All this stuff that he's done and look at the benefit that he's been provided to people and yep. he's providing value. Like people don't get to be rich by being 
by not providing value to people, right? Um, and you could say about how they're spending their money or whatever, that's a whole different issue. But be like, wow, that is awesome that what he's doing or like he's rich because he's worked really hard. How could I do that? How can I take yeah. some lessons for what he's done to get to where he is, study that, exactly. and then apply it to your own life instead of just shitting on people. And this, I, this is going a little bit uh, uh, out of the way, but you know, like when people complain about people, you know, oh, well, all these rich people, they just need to pay their fair share of taxes and whatever. It's like your complaint, they've earned their money and now you just want to take it away so that you can collect it and you can mm. benefit from their success. I know. Like do your own thing so you can be successful for yourself. I don't, don't want to get into that. It's a little bit, whatever, yeah. but just take people's success, learn from it, study it and better yourself. But not only that, like he talks about too, people, people just see where I am now and they don't see all of the work I put in yeah. for years and years and years. They only see like that the success where I am now. It's right. not an overnight thing. Yep. It was decades in the making to get to where yep. he was. He didn't become like an Under Armour sponsored athlete right, right out the gate. Well, he had said, to pay how, his dues. How many, like, how many articles did he write to, to so a magazine many. before he got his first one, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's the other thing that's not people don't understand is like that that unseen work it's they don't like yeah see it. it's the overnight success yeah i'm an overnight success it only took me 20 years to get there right yeah exactly and it just seems like it's an overnight success because you just heard about it right it's like yeah. oh well i just heard about this person it must have just come up how do, how's that happen yeah well exactly. they got lucky you know must be nice yeah yeah he taught he talks about this one hunt that he went on and it's on this huge huge like thousands and thousands of acres um game preserve and you have to be like kind of invited mm. to hunt there and the hunt itself costs seventy thousand dollars just uh, sorry where is this in the united uh, states it's, i think it's in arizona i think that's mm -hmm. where he was so that was really interesting he t and he he missed well he hit the buck but it didn't go down like mm -hmm. he didn't kill it right away and so he felt horrible because of course i think it was like it was like a native um run kind of game preserve and they were you know that's how they're making their money was by these huge price tags right and so he felt so shitty that no, he yeah. missed and they couldn't find it and they go back for the night he feels like sick he doesn't sleep that whole night they go back out the next day and he tells the story like it's a I'm not, this is not like, I'm not into hunting, but it was like, you're just like, oh, you're kind of on the edge. You said like, oh my God, I hope that I hope he gets it. And he does, yeah. but it's a crazy story how he does. So, mm. but I just, $70,000, I had no idea it was like expensive like that. Well, that's just, just for like that reserve though. Like you can just go hunting yeah. like here. So you don't have but, to pay anything. Well, I don't know that that's true. Well, you need a hunting license. So that's going to cost you money. But I don't know, but there's some places where you have to have like a tag for a specific animal okay. for, well, a spe for a specific species and so what he was saying here is the cost of the tag alone was forty thousand mm, dollars so and then you and then that he couldn't even though he didn't kill that buck it doesn't matter that's his animal and that's what you paid for so if, even if he couldn't find it to take it home doesn't matter you're done because what do you mean you're done because you could only that once you hit that animal, it's your animal, whether it's killed or not. Whether you can so you can only kill not, you only kill one. Yeah, and that's forty thousand dollars worth. Hmm. So it's a lot. Is and that so forty thousand dollars worth of meat. Maybe that goes against <laughs> what I was saying about it being cheaper than I the grocery think, store. I think it's I think it's cheaper in other places, but there's lots of places yeah. like Montana where yeah you have to have a specific tag. There's some places where they only give out a certain number of tags. And this is the other thing that people don't realize is it's very managed, and there's a certain like age of the animal that you're allowed to take out and it's culling the herd and yeah. it's, it's a management practice and i don't think people really yeah. realize without hunters it would be a it's shit show well it's, maybe there's a another um comparison would be fishing yeah. and how maybe there's not as much regulation for fishing they just throw their fishing lines in there and just catch all the fish or whatever maybe it's not as like you know you can only catch so many fish or whatever it's like no some people just go in there yeah. and i mean there are some regulations as to when or whatever but you know what i mean i don't think it's as tightly regulated as, as this from what you're saying yeah because that sounds like it's pretty controlled for how well, many animals you can yeah, kill if they're, yeah. if they're gonna each tag is an animal yeah i'm sure there's other people that do things illegally like poachers or whatever but yeah yeah but that's not everywhere though right because i i don't know because remember i don't know some cousins that go home it's like oh we're just going hunting yeah you know so I think it, I, I think it depends and I think it depends on the species for sure. Yeah. But like I think you can if you kill something you're not supposed to kill 
then that's well you can get in trouble but i mean there's trying. there's hunting seasons for certain things yeah, right of so course. like you know up north in Sudbury, like you could go bear hunting people do it all the time right oh, of so course, yeah. i don't know how much it costs or whatever but yeah, yeah that's yeah. interesting it's, again yeah. i don't know anything about hunting so yeah i'm sure that there's hunters that are listening to this will probably cringe at uh <laughs> at our ignorance probably but. i know he his son one of his sons actually broke uh david goggins his pull-up record oh is that his son that yep. broke it yeah yeah, it's his son. Because he's the one that not only break it, he smashed it because it's smashed over six thousand, eh? Yeah, yeah. So he broke it, um, and then the afterword. That's crazy. The afterword of the book is written by Goggins, and he's talking. Oh, really? He's talking about how you know Cam called him up and was just like, "Oh, I'm going to be in Las Vegas. Like, do you want to go for a run?" And so <laughs> Goggins is like, "Oh yeah, I'm just going to take him." I'm just going to take him on a run. He's going to think it's going to be super easy, but no way because I'm Goggins. It's going to be crazy. And so... So, sorry. Who was thinking it was going to be easy? Goggins. Goggins thought that... It was going to be easy. And so they go out... Oh, because Cam's taking him for a run. No, he's taking Cam for a run. Oh, okay. Because he's in Las Vegas, which is where Goggins lives. Oh, okay, okay. Got it, And so he's like, okay, I'm going to take him on this run and he's going to think it's easy, but it's like, it's... Because it starts out easy. Right. But when you have to come back, it's really, really shitty. Sure, he did this other... Okay. Yeah. And so he's like, so Cam goes out and sets a pretty crazy pace and Mm. Goggins is even like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with this pace. Oh, really? So it's like, oh my God. Yeah. So you know if this guy's like yeah. <laughs> getting Goggins tired, like he's legit. Yeah. Yeah. His podcast, the podcast that <laughs> he's funny. I know. The podcast that he's on with um Jocko is so good mm. that it's when and Jocko put, we'll put a link to it. Jocko's reading like parts of the book and like it's almost like Morgan Freeman, <laughs> like mm. like narrating your life. Like it's <laughs> really? Jocko yeah. how he reads things. It, it makes it sound so much better <laughs> and right. like so intense. Right. So. It's really, really good. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Do you remember that stupid commercial? Put a, we should put a link to that. It was uh, Morgan Freeman and the Dave Chappelle. Mm. And it was, a, it was a trailer for one of the Ch- Chappelle's uh, special. Because oh. Dave's he's just oh, driving in the yes, car yes, yes, and yes, Morgan yes. Freeman's just talking. Yeah. You just hear the voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> and then you notice you turn around and then Morgan Freeman's actually there in the car just narrating as he's driving. Then Dave Chappelle just like stabs on the brake. He's like, Morgan Freeman, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's like, Sorry. It's like, what he does. It's all right, you know. It's just like <laughs> God. It's like oh, I can't take enough of this. Awesome. It was so funny. So put it. We got, we got to put a link to that because that, that was the funniest, so one funny. of the funniest trailers I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, for like a comedy yeah. special. Yeah. <laughs> it's like who wants to? Who tells Morgan oh, Freeman to shut up? <laughs> and when they're like narrating your life, it's hilarious. So funny. That's you don't so remember funny. that? Yeah, I just told oh, you. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sorry. Anyways. So. Now what he's doing is, I think he did eventually quit his job at the utility place, and he well, probably a long time ago because he's no, no, no. That's what he said. Is he? He said he worked there for a really not long time. People and like people were and people were just like, well, why can't you quit? The, why wouldn't you quit this job? Like you're making enough through sponsorships. Like you shouldn't right. be working at this or just job. so you can have more time for hunting, even. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know why he didn't quit. But anyway, and just, just 100 percent focus, making more money. I don't know. But I think maybe it's the same thing too. You just want to be. It keeps you in touch a little bit and makes you seem like a bit more, more down, like down to earth, down to earth. And I think just like if I can just be this like a guy working a nine to five job at the utility board, like you can do what I can do. If I can do right. it, then anybody can do it. Basically, I think is the message. With right. Because so, you're right. You're working nine to five. You're running all these marathons every day. You're hunting all the time. But again, mm-hmm. so he's not hunting all the time. Right. So it sounds like because he'll hunt on the weekend. So then he's, he's still going home after his. You know, yeah. you wake up, go for a run, then go to work, come home, right? So then then there's time with the kids, time with the family, and then practice, you know, his, his skills yeah. for a couple of nights now. Sure. Like there's, that's the thing too. There's 24 hours a day. There's lots of time, lots of time. to do all that stuff. Yeah. Even if you just put in like an hour or two of family, uh, family time, I think that's, like that's enough, especially if it's quality I was going to say, it's right? about quality over you know? quantity, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. The other, so he's working with, um, so Jocko has this brand. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're called Origin. And it's mm, all sounds a little familiar. So he's all about like bringing back American manufacturing, and <laughs> so they make boots, they make jeans, and they make geese and for jujitsu. Yep. And now they're making American-made hunting like gear apparel. and apparel. Yeah, yeah. So so he has he's working basically. I think he's like CEO, co-founder kind of thing with this guy with Jocko with Jocko oh, okay. on the hunting gear right. part of origin. Cause he probably knows how to like actually 
tell people how to manufacture things or talking to the engineers of how exactly. to like, yeah, yeah, exactly. this is what we need as we a, need. yeah, yeah. And I just really liked, and well, I just, I love the idea of Jocko's like bringing back all like manufacturing and bringing back these jobs. Yeah, that's, They're expensive. Like I looked at the I was going to say, they right. It's not cheap. This is a, it's a complex issue because yes. you can't just like, I'm just going to bring back manufacturing. There's so many political things at play that need to be in place to help because the, at the end of the day, it's like, what, what you said, like, if I want to buy a jujitsu gi and I'm just starting out, do I have $600 or whatever yeah. to spend on this crafted in U- USA one? Or to get something that's a similar, a good quality, but it maybe it's $200, right? Yeah. You know, so it's like, well, the average person can't yeah. really afford that because why are things not made in America? Well, I mean, there's lot, multiple reasons, but obviously labor, right? It's a lot more expensive yeah. to pay American people American dollars versus pay someone in China where they get paid a dollar a day or whatever it is, right? So I'm not saying it's ethical or whatever, but that's just the reality of how things are. People want their things and they want them cheap. And in order to get that cheap, you have to exploit people. That's a whole other issue. But I mean, that's fantastic. I always love to say, hey, we'll just buy American or Canadian or whatever. Right. But then it's also like, oh, my God. I think I was like, oh, look at this couch. It's made in Canada. Oh, it's six thousand dollars. Well, hello, Ikea Ikea or whatever. Right. Because it's it's. So these, uh, like in the boot, like the boots look really nice. Yeah. They're $378. (laughs) Yeah. And that's American, right? So that's like what? Over $500 Canadian or something crazy like that. Are these steel toed? I don't know. And this is what you wear for hunting? No, these are just boots. This isn't the hunting stuff. These are just boots. Uh Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I like them. Yeah. I I like that look. I like that look. It's all right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's just, that's just one style, right? A little cowboy look. Yeah, that's just one style. Like they have like a lot of really nice ones. Yeah. So, but anyways, so that is the story. What I liked about it is I like, you know, he's really honest. He's like, I'm just kind of mediocre, but it's just, I work hard. I put in the time, I put in the work and it's, this is how you get rewarded is by putting in hard work, not only hard work, but consistency. And that's how, and like the keep hammering, it's just like, yeah, I love that idea. And that's how you become successful. Yeah. So that's what I liked about it. The other thing I loved about it was he's so passionate about hunting, but realizes that doing something else like the running will enhance right. what you, for your, your hunting. Like I loved that as well. I love the idea. And I think too, it could be saying like, if you have a one passion that mm-hmm. you're going for, that's great. But it's also good to maybe get your mind off of yes. that and have something else yes. that maybe can complement it in a, in a different way. You know, like if your passion is, guitar or whatever and you yeah. want to play it all the time that's great but maybe you could try something like this is totally off but like try um free diving or something like that so you help with your breath or whatever exactly. and then you yes. that can help you learn how to sing better i don't know you don't well, even just, even, just something even, else that could complement it that you wouldn't think but even it? with hillary allen the one that fell she does the sky mm, running yep she was doing a phd and that's why she started running was so mm. that she could give her brain a break from right. thinking and it helps you become more creative by yep. like giving your brain a break for to, sure. to wander for sure so yep. it's, you know it's a similar thing yeah, yeah it's so i love i'm just trying to think now in terms of how i could apply some of this stuff like obviously yeah. You just keep hammering away. It's great. Yeah. I think when you're talking about um, training physical stuff, mm-hmm. I think it's pretty easy for everyone to like, okay, well, how do I get better at running? Well, just run more. You know what I mean? Or just learn why. So it's not yeah. too bad. But like when you're trying to do something like build a business, it's mm-hmm. also, yeah, it's keep hammering, but it's also, you don't want to keep hammering on the wrong thing, right? Because there's That's true. so many ways that you can be trying to build a business and it's like, it's just not going to work That's or whatever. True. Like if you just have a shit product, it doesn't matter how much time you spend. Don't waste your time on something that's not going to work. So that's where you need to, at least what I'm be thinking. Smart. You got to be smart and I got to learn about all kinds of different aspects of business of what works. Why do people buy things? Blah, blah, blah. To figure out your market and figure out if you have potential to work at this. And if you do get it, then start hammering away at that yep. and tr- keep building and keep learning about that. And so I love the philosophy, but I think when you're trying to do something that's a little bit outside of like, well, you know, just... Like, I want to learn how to piano. We'll just put in the time to learn piano, right? Not yeah. too difficult. But again, you were trying to build a business. I think you need to be a little bit smart as to what you're hammering on. Like, you still of need course. to work hard. You still need to do work every single day. But also know when it's time to pivot and switch. When what you're hammering on is just not working, right? Like, when you're hammering on, you know, a solid, you know, thing of steel that's never going to move. I don't know. Whatever. Something. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. 
Does that so, make sense? It does. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I love. Just, yeah, just keep hammering away. Just put that on a poster and put it up here somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, just keep. We keep can going. get his merch. It has stay keep hard. hammering on it. Keep hammering. Stay hard. Keep hammering, all stay all stay those hard. things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now so, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. do you want to go hunting with me? I wouldn't want to be a part of cutting up the. Animal. I don't want to do the cutting. <laughs> the cutting <laughs> don't want part. To cut. I I feel like the first time would be the worst. You just have to get used to it. Or would it be more of a like you said, if you actually do the kill yourself and you know you get to the animal, you know, thank you for yeah, providing, providing whatever, and yeah. then you see that, mm. do you think maybe you'd have a different, some kind of crazier emotional reaction? To, I would, yeah, for sure. To make it not be as like. You know, it's not I about just the blood and guts. It's about, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it would still be tough for me. Yeah, I think I'd, yeah. have, I had a, I'd have a hard time with that. So, mm. but I think it would be the kind of thing where it's just like, if you you are just expose yourself to it over and over and over, it just becomes well, like sure. But so, but I. Just, but that just means because you don't think you could feel just looking at the blood and guts. It's just that'd be too. It's just hard gross. to do that. Not necessarily the yeah. fact of. I don't want to look at it because I know that I killed another animal and I just can't do that kind of thing. No, 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 not that at all. No, yeah. it yeah, would mo- just... <laughs> motherfucker, kill, kill all, the, all the animals. No, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then a side note. This is real. I forgot to mention this. It's really mm. sad. But his friend Roy actually in Alaska died while he was hunting. Did he get like eaten by a polar bear no, or something? No, he was hunting. I think it was like the doll sheep and they're like they go like on the mountains and they're they fell off the mountain yeah i know so was he by himself i don't i don't i don't think so i think he was with other people but it's just like yeah. he was such a good friend and he, he he was just in the process of like opening his own like hunting outfitters I was business say, up like there all, so many businesses that these guys yeah. can do without their pro at hunting and they had things that they were going to do together yeah. and so it that's was really really sad so yeah. i just i forgot to mention that so that's that, part of the um, that's part of the story too yeah and that goes into what you're saying about hunting and it's not just you know it's not sunshine and yeah. rainbows like it's tar- and i guess like they're pushing it so like those are the levels that they're pushing it they're in terrain that's actually it's pretty dangerous. dangerous so um well and even like that so the picture on the front cover he took that was a selfie he took on his last hunt with Roy, and that's why he wanted it to be mm. the the picture of the, of yeah. the book. So, yeah, I know, yeah. pretty sad. But, yeah, but that's um, the thing is like so there's careful. serious be, like, consequences. I mean, well, yeah, I things. mean, not all hunting is is mountainous hunting as well oh, too. So I mean, yeah, he, yeah, I stay you know, st- stay safe out there. Stay safe, you know, like yeah, um, like the uh, Alex it reminds me of Alex Honnold uh, just free oh, soloing fuck. and climbing, right? Like there's mountain, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's certain certain mountains where it's yeah, like, I yeah, know. I just don't. Nope, nope. nope. <laughs> it's hard pass. <laughs> nope, hard I don't feel it. Me. So, so, um, so definitely though, like I, I, I would like to experience that definitely because think, that, because okay. I think and they talk about this a lot too. Rogan and him talk about it a lot. We're so removed from our food. That's the other thing too. We're yeah. so removed from it, and I think being able to see the whole circle, like it's just a circle, a circle of life, a circle baby. of life. So I, I do yeah. think I think that'd be cool. So yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So, I, again, this all goes back to uh, I would love to get a piece of land. Yeah, I know. And if it's really, if it's like crazy Pacific Northwest kind of land or whatever, where you just go out west or whatever, and like, yeah, time to go out and get some food, you know, yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. uh, you know, you, you bag a deer and then you're good for, you know, four months of yeah. deer meat or whatever. And it's I also amazing. love the idea of using a like a bow and arrow rather than a gun i love that idea like it's yeah. just so much it's so primal i feel you need a gun for the streets <laughs> <laughs> from uh, the real dangerous uh, animals <laughs> from the real <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness yeah. yeah so well well we'll see what we can do at some point yeah, um absolutely. Uh, yeah i'm running i'd love i wish i could just get into running and not be in so much pain whenever I, I do it. So maybe I just need to fix myself because it's so, you know. it's cheap. You just go out and run, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's, you got to buy your shoes, whatever, but it's cheap. You can do it alone and you can just go out any time. Right. That's even like, like even like cycling. It's, it's like, well, it's the winter time and you can't mm. go out. And, no, I know. Yeah. That's why I love running. I love, yeah. love, love, love it. If it's not cheap though, when you start to buy expensive shoes. That's well, why. <laughs> that's but what see, I but even then, right. Even, even if you have to spend, you know, 200 bucks on a pair of shoes every 
you know, four months. You know, it's only yeah. six hundred bucks a year. I like know, it's true. super cheap, right? Yeah. Like how much are you paying people well, paying gym memberships and all well, that no, stuff, course. right? But then the other thing is like the entry fees for these races that he goes to too. Like entry fees oh, are fucking right, right. crazy. No, no, for sure. Yeah. So that's why yeah, you would just But I'm just talking I don't I don't no, want I know. I, I'm not I a know. I don't want to do races. I just I wanna know. just wanna yeah run. But then again I love hockey too much too. Yeah. That's <laughs> I'd true. rather play hockey, yeah, which is also not cheap. Not cheap. Yeah. Um anyways, so yeah, so maybe we'll get into hunting. Hunting. I guess. One to ten. Um, yeah, probably like an eight. An eight. I, yeah, because I felt like it jumped around a lot, and I think because he mm. has so many things, like he has those little passages kind of interspersed, right? With within within the story, and like yeah, like there's still like a lot of questions I <laughs> I have. I'll about. just put this up. This yeah. is uh, yeah. Thank you, critics. Kind of like one of these what these little, passages kind of look yeah. like. In but it's book. but it's so motivational. Yeah. It's such a good motivational book. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely highly recommend. And like I'm not like into hunting and I'm like, how is that your passion? I don't no. get that. But But you extrapolate, but right? You That's under- his thing. Extrapolate to your yes, thing. Yes, exactly. And uh, and it w- and it still was really well written. Like I said, that one the one hunt that he was talking about that paid seventy thousand dollars to go to, I was just like, Oh my gosh, like edge of my seat. Like, what's gonna happen? Right, right. So what's going on? What's yeah. going on? Yeah, that's so good. good. That's good. Yeah. So recommended. Recommend. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that was really good. Thank yeah. you for thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're um, welcome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah. So I think that's it. That's it. Thank you, as always, for for tuning in and watching us and listening to us. We really appreciate it. It's yeah. awesome. Um, if you like our stuff, again, check us out. Odumanandrew.com. More podcasts are. Are there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they all are. Yeah. And um, yeah, Ooh, let's do it. High five. High five. That one was a little off. A little, a little off. off. You want to do another one? No. Okay. One's, one's good. <laughs> once you, you can't. It's you done. can't redo. You can't redo. There's no, no take backs. No take backs. No redos. Nope. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. Endure. Get at it. Keep hammering away. And until <laughs> then. Have a good week. See you next time.